Welcome back everyone to another video here on the Unknown Coder YouTube channel. As always, I'm Ethan and today we're working on another leak code problem. This time around we're doing 1346, check if n and its double exist. This is an easy marked question. However, for whatever reason, it only gets accepted about 30% of the time. Maybe it's because it's a little bit confusing the way they have described or something else, but the solution of the problem might also surprise you as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything and then get into this. So check if n and its double exist. All they give us for the description is that given an array called r of integers go ahead and check if there's two indexes i and j such that the first thing is that i can't equal j so they can't be the same index i and j of course are both inside of the array and here's the real challenge the value at i has to equal the value at j times two. So that's the actual challenge here is looking for two indexes such that the value at each index times two is equal to the other one or vice versa. So let's go ahead and take a look at the examples to see what's going on here. For example, number one, what we're gonna be looking at is an array input of 10, two, five, and three. And what it's going to be looking for is a true or false value, whether or not there is two indexes that one is double the other one. In this case, we do have two of those indexes. Five times two is equal to 10. So in this case, we would return true. Now let's take a look at example number two. For example two, what we're going to have is an array called R with three, one, seven, and 11. And if you look very closely here, you're going to see that there's no values times two here that are going to equal one another. So this one will return false. And again, this is because there's no values values or no indexes where it's value times two is equal to some other index. Let's go back up to the top and take a look at some of our constraints. For this problem, our constraints are pretty simple. Firstly, we have two is less than or equal to array dot length is less than or equal to five. So basically just a saying is that array has at least two values. So you're going to have at least two indexes to look at and then could be up to 500. So nothing too crazy here. We're always going to have at least two values to check against and then we're going to have up to 500 values that we could check against. Finally, 10 to the three is is less than or equal to array i is less than or equal to 10 to the 3. So basically this is just saying that the values inside of the array are between negative 100 and 100. So nothing too crazy there. So now this problem our goal is going to be to basically go through and check every single value in the array and then see if there exists another value inside the array where the index at the first one is equal to the index at the second one times 2 or vice versa. Now there's multiple ways to actually achieve this and you would think that the best runtime on leak code would involve a single form loop whenever i first thought about it you'd probably want to use like a hash map or hash table to store the double of each value and then check later on if you find another one however this actually ends up being a slower runtime using a hash map or hash table than using a nested for loop so let's go ahead and take a look at the pseudocode that will actually solve this problem in the fastest amount of time here in LeetCode. code so what we want to start by saying is that for each number inside the array called r what we want to do is search for an index j where firstly array of i is equal to array of j times two and if we do find this we want to go ahead and return that index j otherwise we want to return negative one and after searching we want to go ahead and check this found index j for a couple of things first we want to check to see if j is greater than negative one then we want to check to see if j is not equal to the current index if both of these are true then our algorithm will return true otherwise we'll just continue the loop then if the loop doesn't return true ever so we've run out of values there's no more values to check then we'll go ahead and return false after the loop so we're going to go through each index and search for another index called j that is equal to the value at index i times the value at index j. And as long as j exists basically and j is not equal to i, we'll return true. Otherwise, if we find nothing, we'll go ahead and return false. Let's go ahead and see a run through of this example. So we'll use the example of array equal to 10, 2, 5, and 3. In this example, iteration 0, the array of i is going to be equal to 10 and the array of i times 2 is going to be equal to 20. So we're going to be looking for some index j where the value at that index is equal to 20 so j equals 0 our array of j is equal to 10 which is not equal to 20 so j equals 1 the array of j is going to be equal to 2 which is not equal to 20 j equals 2 array of j is going to be equal to 5 which is not equal to 20 j of 3 array of j is equal to 3 which is not equal to 20 so now we've gone to the end the index will return is negative 1 and continue so obviously the index that we return is negative 1 so we want to go ahead and continue our loop so i equal to 1 our array of i is equal to 2 and array of i times 2 is equal to 4. So now back to j equals 0. Array of j is equal to 10, which is obviously not equal to 4. j of 1. Array of j is going to be equal to 2. 2 is not equal to 4. So we'll move on to j equals 2. Array of j is now going to be equal to 5, not equal to 4. So finally, j equals 3. Array of j is equal to 3, which is not equal to 4. We got to the end of this loop. 
So we need to say index minus one. We need to continue to the outer loop. So we'll move on to i equal to two. For i equal to two, our array i is equal to five and our array i times two is equal to 10. So now we'll go ahead and start with j again. So j equals zero, array of j is equal to 10, which is actually equal to array of i times two. So now index will be set to zero. And now outside of the j and still under i equals zero, index is greater than negative one. Now I'm gonna see if index j is equal to i. In this case, index is equal to zero which is not equal to i which is equal to two so in this case that means we found the value that we're looking for and we can go ahead and return true and this is how our code would run on leak code so let's go ahead and hop over to leak code and take a look how we can implement this inside of leak code before we actually create our boolean check if exists we're going to create a helper method and we're going to call this int search and search is going to take an integer array and it's going to take in the number we're searching for int k and inside here we're going to have a for loop for int i is equal to zero i is less than array dot length in i plus plus and all we're going to do is we're going to say if the array of i is equal to k then we want to go ahead and return that index i otherwise we're going to go ahead and return negative one so this is that inner loop or that first part that we're talking about when we're searching for an index j then inside of our check if exists we're going to say for int i equal zero i is less than array dot length in i plus plus we're going to go ahead and say index is equal to search and we're we're going to pass it the array and the array of i times two then we're going to use this index to say if index is greater than or equal to zero like we mentioned before and the index is not equal to i then this means that we have found the answer we're looking for so we'll go ahead and return true otherwise we'll keep going on and on and then at the end of the loop if we've never returned true we'll go ahead and return false as always let's fingers crossed that i didn't type anything in submit there we go. We get zero millisecond runtime. This beats 100% and it beats 19% of memory complexity. That's fine. Again, it blows my mind that this is the best solution, but it is what it is. You could probably also get away from using the helper function if you wanted to, but it is what it is. As always, my name is Ethan on a coder. If you felt like this video provided you with some knowledge or provided you with some value, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, because that always helps out in the YouTube algorithm. As always, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.